Hi everyone, my name's Sophie Maxwell. I'm 27 years old and I'm from the UK. Um, I run a social enterprise called The Really Neat Project. We work with young people that are not in employment, education or training, largely those that are homeless, on probation or young parents. Um, I'd say I'm quite a lively character. Um, I like to, um, to do to feel like I'm giving back in life and, and changing lives and you know that, that's what drives me. When I was growing up, um, I had an abusive upbringing, uh, a stepfather that was both sexually and physically and emotionally abusive. Um, and this affected me as a child and, and my dreams in life. I, I, I felt like I didn't have any dreams or, you know, I didn't believe I could be someone. Um, and then when I was 17 years old, I was, I was homeless and I was living in a women's refuge and um, two people lived next door to me and they moved into my supported flat and they were doing drugs at the time. Um, and they started taking heroin um, and it very quickly got out of control. And within three months, um, the young man that was coming around to my flat died of a heroin overdose when I was in the room with him. And it led me to be in court um, and telling his parents what had happened and why it had happened. And this was the defining point in my life where I believed, you know, I wanted to make a difference. I needed to change. My life was going down a path I didn't want it to go down. And, you know, I needed to do something about it. So the defining point in my life was when I was living in a women's refuge centre in a supported flat and I witnessed the tragic death of a friend from a drug overdose. I had to stand up in court and tell his parents why this poor lad had lost his life. And I just remember thinking my life could have gone down two paths. I could follow him to death or I could do something with my life. And a few days later, I walked into my local college and I asked them, please teach me, I wanna learn. And there was an amazing tutor there at that point in time and his name was Paul and Paul said to me come and learn with me I'll teach you I do a sport course and I want you to be on that course Sophie uh, and I just remember thinking you know this guy's amazing you know I've got no qualifications and he's willing to take me on and Paul used to come to the homeless hostels and pick me up and he'd take me to the boxing ring I remember one day having this boxing match with Paul and punching him in the stomach and him screaming in pain. And I asked him what was wrong and he told me he had stomach cancer. Paul spent the last two years of his life engaging with me and making my, me believe in myself. He lost his life before I graduated at college, but it was that one person that believed that I could make it to university, you know, and, and the fact that he'd done this for the last two years of his life, you know, what an exceptional person to be facing death and say, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna go out and help people and make them believe in themselves. And it was that, that one person that did that for me that made me think, do you know what, I can do it. What I would like to say to the politicians out there is that never write a young person off because of their circumstances. Politicians in the UK are pushing for young people to be, be into work but how can a young person be in work if they've gone through trauma in their lives that have meant they've disengaged in education and not got the qualifications? We must understand the journey that a young person has gone through before we force them into making huge life choices like getting a job. We must take our time and be patient with these young people. And over time, they will change and they will make a difference to society and they will become successful. But we need to give them the time to do this and to overcome the difficulties and the trauma they've had in their lives.